today in our 2018 GMC Sierra 2500, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Bulldog Winch 500 amp shutoff switch with a metal housing, part number BDW20248. So here's what our cutoff switch is going to look like. Now I do want to mention that the bracket and all the cables are not included, it is just going to be the switch. Our switch is going to have a nice metal housing on it, so it's going to be extra durable. And the red handle is going to make it extra easy to find, even in low light situations. Now in our application we're using two, one for each battery on our truck. Now even though we're using ours in a flat toe setup to cut the batteries out, these switches are ideal for any heavy duty application where you need to cut the power off to whatever accessory you're sending it to, such as a winch that's hooked up to your trailer or even a winch on your truck. Our switch is going to work with a 12 or 24 volt system and it can handle up to 500 amps. Now that we've taken a look at our switches, let's show you how to get them installed. To begin our installation, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take the negative cable off of both of your batteries. Now, since it is a diesel, it is going to have two batteries. So over here on the driver's side, we already went ahead and disconnected the negative cable. I'm just going to push it out of the way for right now, making sure it doesn't come back in contact. Now, as you want to mention that we already have our mounting bracket mounted up, and we're using a seven-way mounting bracket that normally would hold an electrical socket because our switch fits perfectly right inside the opening and the holes line up to mount up our hardware. Now, if you want to pick one up from our website, go ahead and use part number PK12711U. So we're going to come to the positive side of our battery and we're going to have this cover right here. So we can go ahead and remove the cover and set it aside. And we're going to be disconnecting the cable coming off of the positive side of our battery. So you're going to want to grab a 14 millimeter socket and remove the nut holding that cable on. Now we're going to hold on to the nut because we are going to have to reinstall another cable later on. So we can pull the cable off and we're going to start routing it towards our bracket. Just want to make sure that you're not getting caught on anything. We'll go around our negative cable. It should go right around the fuse box right here. You may have some clips that are holding it in place along the fender well here, but once you have the clips undone, you can just pull the cable up and around. That way we have plenty of slack to get to our switch, which is gonna be mounted right at that bracket. So on the bottom of our switch, we're gonna have two terminals with a couple nuts on them holding them in place, as well as lock washers. So on one of the sides, we're going to go ahead and remove the nut and lock washer and we're going to get our cable put in place. And I'm going to put the lock washer and nut back in place and thread it on hand tight for right now. Now the other side, we are going to have to pick up a battery cable or have one made. Now you can go to a local auto parts store and I would assume about the length of cable you're going to need is about three feet. That should be plenty of cable to get from this switch routing behind the same way, behind the fuse box, and go to the battery. So you can remove the nut and lock washer, and we're going to put our other cable on that end as well. Now we're going to leave our cables a little loose. You just want to put them hand tight. That way you can still move them around and position them where you need them to be. And we're going to loosely kind of test fit our switch just to get an idea of where we're going to have everything. We're going to be coming from the bottom, but I just want to get an idea before I tighten everything down of how I'm going to have my switch sitting. So then we can come back now that we know where our cables generally need to sit. And we can come back and tighten those two nuts. So you're going to grab a 17 millimeter wrench and you're going to tighten up that nut. And we'll tighten up the other one as well. And once you have them nice and snug, we're going to make sure that we don't get any kind of arcing or sparks going on. So we're going to take a little bit of electrical tape and we're going to wrap it around the bottom in case anything were to happen or anything were to break or fall and touch this, there'll be some tape protecting it from shorting everything out. And what I like to do is I like to wrap each one of the terminals individually just with a little bit.
And then since we do have a little bit of metal exposed, I'm gonna wrap around the cables and then the entire bottom of the terminal itself as well. Just wanna make sure you cover any metal components with some electrical tape or heat shrink or something in case, like I said, something were to break, somebody forgets a wrench underneath the hood or anything like that, we're not gonna have to worry about any shorts or any kind of electrical issues. So we're gonna slide our switch up from the bottom because that way we know we have enough clearance because it's gonna meet up right here at that threshold to where our hood's not gonna come in contact. Then we can take the hardware from our bracket and secure it down. I'm just gonna get it started hand tight. That way the switch will support itself. And if we get one started hand tight, that way the switch won't fall out on us and we can get the other one started afterwards. We can come back with a flathead screwdriver let me tighten up those screws. Now we're gonna connect the cable that we routed on the other side of our switch back to the battery terminal that we took the original one off of. So we're gonna go the same path that we took this, the cable off of, going underneath and around all the cables and everything else ran on the side here, making sure we have enough room. We're gonna go right back to the battery post and reinstall that nut. And again, grabbing that 14 millimeter socket and snugging it up. So we can replace the cover. And then we can start putting our negative cables back on both of our batteries. So with both of our switches in the off position, we can double check to make sure that we're not getting any kind of power to the vehicle by taking the key and turning the accessories on. Now, as you can see, the radio, the dash, nothing's lighting up, so we know that we don't have any power. So now, if we go ahead and turn our switch on, we can go back in and double check that we do have power. Just make sure to turn on both switches. So we can already see that we have a light on our dash, but just to make sure, we'll go ahead and put the key in and turn the accessories on. So it looks like we're getting power and everything's good. And if we turn our truck on, we're not gonna have any kind of lights or any error messages on the dash. So everything's still gonna work like normal. And then I'll finish up your look at the Bulldog Winch 500 amp shutoff switch with a metal housing, part number BD-W20248 on our 2018 GMC Sierra 2500. Thanks for watching. Click the link in our description below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com. And leave us a comment if you have any questions.